Hi, I'd like to uh, do a little video here about um, jQuery and JavaScript. And this will be sort of a short introduction to jQuery. So, so far what I have here is I have an HTML document, index HTML, <coughs> in this folder right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my HTML document in the browser here. So there it is, and you know it doesn't really show us much because the document is blank right now. I'm going to open up the console also. Whenever we're working with JavaScript, we always want to have the console open because if there's an error in JavaScript, it'll show in the console and we'll be able to uh, tell that we have an error, right? So uh, I'm going to be editing in brackets here. <coughs> you can use any HTML editor that you like. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the script tag to my page. So whenever we write JavaScript, we always place it within the script tag. Okay, and you can put the script tag pretty much anywhere on the page. Um, it matters though where the script tag shows up um, and what you're doing in the script tag. So I'm going to talk about that too. Um, but anyway, there's our script tag. And let's imagine we have a, um, a div tag here. Oops, let's spell that right here. Okay, and I'm going to give my div tag an ID. Okay, and I'll call it ID box, say. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, do something with the box, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the script tag here, and what I want to do is get a reference to the box, to this div, this HTML element, okay? And so I'll make a variable in JavaScript, and I will set it equal to document dot get element by ID. So this function, get element by ID, um, requires that you include a string, which is an ID name, and uh, then it will return you the object that has that ID name. Okay? So we're going to do this, and then what I want to do is I want to see what it outputs. Okay? There we go. So we'll use console log to log the box object, whatever that happens to be, to the uh, to the terminal. <coughs> Pardon me. And so uh, let's give it a try. So I'll go to the browser and I'll refresh my page here. Let me move this over so we can kind of see the two side by side, right? Um, and I'll refresh. And you'll see that it, it um, outputs null. Okay, so this is what, this is the results of the console log message here. Okay, so I'm logging box and it says null. What this means is that um, when I did document get element by ID, um, it could not find any element named box and so it returned a null. Right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that, you know, this, this failed right here. Okay, and this fails because when JavaScript loads a page, when it sees the script tag, you know, it reads all the characters here one at a time until it gets to the end, cl the closing tag here, and then it executes the JavaScript inside the script tag. And in this case, it's, it's doing that before the div down here on a higher line number is loaded. Okay, so JavaScript reads the page like this, and when it gets to here, it executes this script, and this has not loaded yet. Therefore, ID box is null. It doesn't exist. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that this script or any, any script that you write is going to be executed after the item that it's going to target. So if this is going to target some element with an ID name, then that element with the ID name needs to be loaded first. So in general, what you can do is you can move the element above the script. So in this case, um, I can put the ID box up here, and it will load first, and then the script tag will load. Okay, let's give it a try and see what it says in the browser. Oh, look, and then it says div ID box, right? So that's our element, okay? Um, and then now we could work with the box, and we could do things with it, okay? So uh, so just remember that, right? We got You have to load the um you know your div or whatever you know whatever html element elements you're going to work with you got to load them first and then you have to you know run your script afterwards um 
I don't have any other HTML in here. Let me add the rest of my HTML code here. Okay, so I'm going to add the doc type, the HTML tag. Okay, and what I'm going to do is let me just build the HTML page first and then I'll place these elements inside there and we can kind of see how we want to set up our pages. Okay, so I'll put the head tag here, I'll put the title tag. Um, and then we need the body tag. How about that, right? So now, now we got a good old HTML page here. So um, this div tag is obviously going to go somewhere inside the body tag, okay? Next, the script tag here, and what I'm going to suggest, and there's other ways to do this, but um, I think when you're just getting started, probably the best thing to do is always put the script tag at the bottom of the body tag. So, you know, you can have any amount of HTML here, you know, filling up the body tag. And then at the very bottom, the last thing that you're going to have in here is your script tags. And if you do this, then you'll make sure that everything in the document is loaded first. And then you don't have to do anything, you know, do any special tricks to make sure that your scripts load after the stuff on the page. I mean, you can do that too, but, um, you know, and you can learn about that. But I think as a beginner, the, the easiest way to arrange it is this way. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to suggest that that you guys all do that. Um, so uh, so anyway, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to um, learn about jQuery. Okay, this um, JavaScript here is good to know. Um, get element by ID, and you can use you know get elements by class name if you have elements with classes. Um, you know, and you can use query selector to you know select any any item by a you know CSS query. Um, and this is really great, and it's really good to know this, but jQuery kind of makes the whole process a lot easier. So in general, if you're just a front-end designer and you're not writing heavy-duty you know, JavaScript code, but you want to be able to do a lot with JavaScript, jQuery is sort of a library that just makes um, working with elements in JavaScript a lot easier, and you end up actually typing a lot less. Um, <coughs> I've tried to get by without jQuery, and I just can't do it. It, it is really good. Like, it actually works really well, even though it's, it seems kind of dated. Um, but anyway, let's, let's talk about how we're going to work with, with jQuery, okay? So I'm going to actually remove all this right now, because I'm not going to use that, okay? Well, I'm going to leave this script tag here, okay? So jQuery is, I'm going to go to um, their website right here. I'm going to go to jQuery query.com okay and jQuery they have their tagline is jQuery write less do more and this is pretty accurate like I find that you know everything I want to do with JavaScript um, in general if I'm using jQuery I'm typing a lot less um, and I'm getting a lot more done so uh, so this is pretty accurate but anyway here's their site and what we want to do is we want to first click on the orange download jQuery button and there's two ways to work with jQuery we can download the library and link to it or we can link to the library on someone else's server okay and that's called the CDN content delivery network and I'm going to choose that method. I think that that's the best way to, to work with jQuery unless you have something special in mind. The one downside to this method is that, um, is that if you're working offline, you won't be able to access these files, okay? So you have to have an internet connection, but in my case, I think that's okay. So I'm going to go down here to where it says jQuery CDN, right? And I'm going to just copy this first line. And you can see that this is the script tag right so uh, we can just copy the script tag and we just need the first one okay and we can just paste that directly in our document now just like um, we need to load our elements before our scripts that act on them if we have you know more than one script tag and more than one script in our in our document we need to load the scripts that are that our other scripts depend on so I'm going to write code here that works with jQuery, which means that I'll have to load the jQuery code first. So I'll put this script tag above the other one. Okay, so this will load first, and that will make jQuery available, and then our script will run, and we can work with jQuery here. Okay? I can't spell today, okay? Um, but anyway, there we go, right? 
So there's our script tag. Um, notice that this script tag has a, the source attribute, just like the image tag, and so it's going to link to the jQuery JS file on the internet. Okay, um, if you have a script tag with a source attribute, you can't put script inside the tag also. So you'll have to make another script tag for your scripts that you write here. Okay, um, one more thing. Um, this script tag is missing the HTTP colon here. And that's okay if the scripts are running on your server. But if the script is, um, if the script is, uh, is running locally, like in my example, it's running from the desktop. In that case, um, it won't work without the HTTP colon. So you have to include that. Okay, so I'm going to add this. And then now we'll be able to load our jQuery, right? Okay, so previously you saw how we, um, how we made a selection that selected the box. Let's um, do that with jQuery. So jQuery starts with the dollar sign and follows with the parentheses. So essentially they have a function that's just named after the dollar sign. And you can call on that function and you can pass in a string that is any CSS selector. So any CSS selector that you can think of, you can type in here and jQuery will select that element. So in my case, I want to select the element with the ID name box, right? And then, you know, now we can act on that element. So this is a lot shorter than typing, you know, document uh, dot, you know, get element by ID and then the ID name. Um, like that, right? So, so you'll and you'll see jQuery shortens a lot of things, right? And they give you a lot of helper functions to, you know, to make your life easy. But anyway, there's our there's our jQuery. And just as an example, why don't we set the HTML property? Oops, I missed the dot there. Um, so we can set the HTML property here, and the HTML property sets the inner HTML. So in other words, whatever you put in here is going to be the string that you type in here. So I'll say, you know, hello world. There's our traditional programming um, problem, right? So essentially, I'm going to take this text right here, you know, and put it, you know, in here, but, but through JavaScript, right? So I'll save my document. I'll go to the document here in the window and refresh it. And then you can see the words hello world, you know, and if I inspect that, um, you'll see that there's div box and it says hello world inside there, okay? So anyway, that got us started with, with jQuery and I'll, I'll make another video where we do some more interesting things with it, okay? So anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that, that helps you out.